What is going on you guys? This is Chris with Patch Boy Dar, Patches for the Culture. And in today's video, we're gonna be getting the Etsy order ready on the new Brother PRS 100, also known as the Brother Persona. For this order, we are making the number five from Kids Next Door. Let's go. All right, so first things first was powering the machine on. Let's go ahead and plug in my USB stick. Got my USB stick right here. We're gonna plug this into the side of the unit. But before we do that, Let's go ahead and close out this screen. To get out of the slideshow on the screen, I'm just gonna go ahead and tap the screen. This gives me a little message saying the carriage of the embroidery unit will move. This is a common message that is shown on all the brother machines. Uh, so if you plan on getting the brother machine, this will be a message that constantly pops up when you first uh, turn on your unit. So let's go ahead and press the OK button. But before we press the OK button, I'm gonna zoom out for you guys. So that way you guys can see what happens when you press the button. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit that OK button and you will see that this frame will move. There we go. It's asking if I wanna recall uh, a previous design that I was doing. I don't wanna recall it, so I'm gonna hit cancel. So now that brings me to the main menu. So now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in that USB stick. The USB port is located on the right hand side of the screen. You can see it right there. There's also a port, so if you wanted to plug in your embroidery machine directly to your computer, you can do that as well. But I'm gonna be using the handy dandy USB stick, so let's get that plugged up in there, like so. Now from here, I am going to hit the USB button on the screen. It is transmitting by USB. Let's give this a few moments. So now we're gonna go through our menu and find the design that we need to make. Uh, so I'm just going to go down. The cool thing about the Brother Persona is that it, um, once you upload a USB, it does categorize things in alphabetical order, which is pretty convenient. So if you know like what uh, design you're using, you'll know whether to go down or up to get you like closer to the file name that you were looking for. So let's see. Where's my kids next door? Hmm. I might have not named it Kids Next Door. Hmm. There it is. So there's the file I need right there in that upper left-hand corner. Let me zoom in for you guys. So I'm gonna select this file right here in that upper left-hand corner. Oops, I accidentally hit the wrong one, which is fine. Let me go ahead and hit the correct one. So there it is, number five from Kids Next Door. We're gonna be stitching that thing out on the brother PRS 100. So from here, I'm going to hit the set button right down here in this lower right hand corner. Now from here, I do want to scale it down because it is currently at 3.64 inches. So let me hit the size button and I'm gonna hit the first option in the upper uh, left hand side. And I'm gonna hold that and see how far down it goes. Yep, so that's good. It took it all the way down to 3.27 inches, which is nice. I'm trying to keep my patches no larger than 3.25 inches. Uh, so that's not bad at all, it being at 3.27. It's still within that realm. So now we're gonna go here on the right-hand side of the screen and we're gonna look at the colors that are needed to complete this design. So I need black, I need my brown, I need a blue, white, I need my fuchsia pink and a yellow. I already have black thread loaded up on the machine and it's already feeding through. And that is the first color that is on the design. So I'm gonna leave the black there, but I'm gonna get the rest of the colors and load them up onto these empty spools and just have them ready. Now that I've had more time to mess around with the Brother Persona, I do enjoy the machine. It's a great machine. The only downside is it's a single needle. So that means you gotta do color changes. The brand is relatively small, so we don't necessarily need machines that have multiple needles. If we do end up scaling up, we will get some bigger machines with multi-needles. Might get the six needle, might get the 10 needle. Who knows? The quality of the stitches is A1, but for now, the single needle Brother PRS 100 will get the job done. As I mentioned earlier, I already got black thread loaded up, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the next three colors loaded up. There are a total of four spool stands up there, so that way you guys can load up the next threads that you need. So for the next three colors in this embroidery sequence, I'm gonna be using this brown right here. This is the Madeira 1144. This is my go-to brown. I use this in all of my patches. The next color up is the Madeira 1133, but this is the blue that we use in a lot of designs that we have on the Etsy shop. Then we have the Madeira 1001. 
This is our go-to white thread that we use. Up on the spool, we have the Madeira 1000. That is also our go-to black thread that we use in all of our patch designs. So we definitely go through a lot of that black thread. So now let me go ahead and get these loaded up and I'm gonna switch the camera angles. So that way you guys can see how I load these spools up when it's time for that color change. All right, all right. So after the black, we're gonna have the brown. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the brown right next to the black thread. Then we have the blue. So let me put the blue right here. And then we have white right there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go through these little prompts up on the machine that show you how to have these threads ready for when it's time to change that color thread. So as you guys can see, there's the number one, the number two, then it's gonna go through this funnel and you're gonna clip it right in the middle of this portion right here. And that will hold the thread in place. So let's go ahead and go through that. Mm -hmm. So I went right through the number one, I'm gonna go through number two right there. And I'm gonna come up around here, then come through this little scissor area. And that cut the little excess thread off. And so now that thread is set in position. Now I'm gonna do the same for the rest of the colors. Right here, let's get that one. Yeah, yeah, just threading the brown through right now. Getting it through number two, coming down this crevice and snipping it right there. All the threads in the sequence are all threaded up, ready to go. So now the next thing to do would be to go ahead and hit the start button on this design. So that way it does all of the black first and then it's gonna switch to the brown, then blue, then the white. And then I'm gonna have to switch up the, uh, to that uh, fuchsia pink and some yellow. But yep, I already got everything hooped and framed, ready to go. So let me get you guys situated so I can show you the next part. All right, so from here, I haven't finished uh, setting the design, so I'm gonna just hit okay right there. I'm gonna hit embroidery right in this lower right hand corner. So it is ready to go. You can see that this button appeared that says lock. What you gotta do is you gotta hit that lock button on the screen and then this button will turn green and start flashing. That means it's ready to go. So once you hit that green button, it's gonna start doing this thing. And before I hit that green button, check it out. On the Brother Persona, it does have an indication laser to so let you know where it's gonna start stitching at, which is very helpful. So if you're doing something custom and you want it, your design to be in a specific place, you can definitely utilize the aspect of that red laser to show you where it's gonna start stitching. All right, so now let's hit that green button and get it going. Right now I'm using my lapel mic. The machine is relatively quiet, it's not super loud. Um, it's still noisy, but it's not super loud. Honestly, when it comes to the noise comparison, it's not too much louder from my uh, Brother SE 625s. And now that I got the Brother PRS 100, I still use my Brother uh, SE 625s. These are still great machines, they still get the job done. I even got an extra USB for that one. So this machine is doing this thing. It got, it's uh, doing, like I said, it's doing the black thread. It's doing that Madeira 1000, which is our go-to black thread. Mm -hmm. You see the design itself is gonna take 39 minutes, but I do only have it at 400 stitches per minute. Uh, and to change the stitches per minute, all you have to do is come in where it shows that 400 SPM and uh, I'm gonna take it up to 600. Yeah. And up here, when you change the stitches per minute, uh, it does change the time. So now we went from uh, 39 minutes to 26 minutes. And as you can see, the machine uh, is definitely kicking it up. It got a little bit noisier because it's going faster, but hey, that's part of the game. All right, guys, so while the machine is doing this thing, I wanted to show you guys uh, my packaging. So if you guys plan on starting an embroidery brand, maybe you want to start selling patches and whatnot, uh, you want to do some custom work for people, uh, I highly recommend getting yourself some custom packaging. So I use crystal clear baggies, and I went to Office Depot. I made a design for the brand. So this right here, this shows my logo, and it also has uh, two QR codes. So that way customers can follow on both our YouTube and Instagram. All they have to do is scan our QR codes on the back of the packaging. And in the front, 
It's just a solid uh, white background. I already got a patch in there for another Etsy order that we gotta get complete today. This is a separate order from the number five Kids Next Door patch. But yeah guys, if you guys are starting a brand, definitely get yourself some custom packaging going. It doesn't hurt at all. Um, yeah, you gotta put a little bit of money down to get your cards printed out. And what I did was I put uh, design-wise, oh here, let me show you guys. Yeah, we just stitching, right? We just stitching, we just doing our thing around here. Hopefully I don't have too many jump cuts and too many edits. Uh, but let me show you guys my packaging. So I got the manila envelope. I do have all of my cards. So here's the full card sheet right here, as you guys can see. With this design sheet, I did use Kermo Photography and Design. Uh, a local photography company here. If you guys are in Colorado and you need some photography work done, definitely check out Kermo Photography and Design. She does awesome work. But she went ahead, I had her design this uh, packaging sheet for me. As you can see, it has like, uh, there's four different squares. So on one sheet of paper, I was able to get four designs that will go into my packaging. Um, and all I gotta do, there's even like guidelines that show me like where to cut. So it makes it easy and convenient when I'm doing, when I'm cutting these all out on my little like cutting, my little cutting board. So I got a bunch of these. I got a bunch of the crystal clear baggies. I highly recommend getting yourself some brand packaging. This looks a lot more professional than just sending the patch out in a little baggie with no type of branding whatsoever. And not only that, I even went on Amazon and I purchased I purchased a roll of these uh, thank you stickers. You guys can see that there. Yeah, so there's about 500 of these thank you stickers. And what I do is I slap these thank you stickers onto the packaging. And I'll show you guys right now, check it out. So, I'm gonna take my sticker off. I'm gonna get my current design that's in the baggie. And I'm gonna just go ahead and slap that sticker right on in the corner. Uh, let me do it right here. There we go. So there, so now I got the thank you sticker on the packaging as well. And that just makes it look oh so better. All right, look at that y'all, look at that. How much better does that look? And when it's all said and done, what I do is I remove the adhesive tab right here. And then I'll just like fold it down. So that way it hugs up against the packaging itself. On the back side, it'll just look like that. Front side, it'll look like that. I'm gonna put my packaging away. We're gonna get back over here and check out how this design is stitching out. Yeah, buddy. So there it is so far. It still got a little bit more to do on the black. No big deal. But look at that machine go, y'all. 600 stitches per minute. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. That black thread up there is working. All my little tension guys are working too. This gives you guys a little B-roll of that thread just flowing through. Going down that canal right there. Coming down here through that little number six hole, right? And then it's just stitching away. Man, I love the quality that this machine is outputting. While this is going, I wanted to show you guys the first beanie that I made on this machine. So I did make this beanie on the PRS 100. It turned out super dope. Check it out, y'all check it out. Let me get you guys closer so you can see. Actually, let me change my focal point. I gotta change that focal point. Also, I need to get better lighting on it. Hang on. Let me adjust these lights real quick. So I did this on the PRS 100. Uh, it is like a, it does have a 3D poof effect. I used some foam underneath there. Um, I didn't do a tack down stitch. Uh, what I did was, so I did like a, I did do like a, like a single run stitch around. Cause I, I did a little applique on it. So I did a single run stitch and I used um, my black duck canvas for the background. And then I used, um, then I did the process of doing like the 3D poof. So it does have like a little poofiness to it. Uh, it does like, I don't know if you guys can really see it on the camera, but it is 3D effect. It does have the 3D poof effect. I'm super excited how this turned out. I mean, you can also see that I did the same design on this, this hoodie. Check it out, check it out. Look at that, look at that branding y'all. Look at that 3D poof. How cool is that? Yeah, so this was my first 3D poof attempt. It did turn out pretty cool. My placement isn't 100% that good. 
because I did I did do this on the brother SC 625s and so like when I was doing my placement I didn't quite place it right I didn't have any like placement rulers to do the design but it turned out pretty good so on the back of my hoodie I did use the Cricut machine so this is heat press vinyl uh, it is glow in the dark vinyl and yes it actually does glow in the dark it's pretty cool but yeah this is my brand hoodie this is my first brand hoodie that I actually made myself. I got the hoodie from um, Hobby Lobby. It was 18 bucks. Not too bad, I guess, but I guess you could probably find some cheaper options online or if you go through a wholesaler. The beanie I got from Joann's, the beanie was on sale for six bucks. It says that it's typically uh, $12, but I got it for $6. I do like the material. I do like this beanie material. Let me show you guys what the beanie brand is. So this beanie is, um, one of the Heidi and Joe knit beanies. So if you guys went to Joann's and wanted to get yourself a black beanie, you, this is the Heidi and Joe, as I said, knit beanie. You can get pick one of these up. I do provide a combo option. So for any of you who are looking to start your own like little clothing brand and want to do like a little sample, I do offer the left or right chest hoodie and the beanie as a combo deal. So hit me up if you want to get your brand started. Back over here to the Brother PRS 100. The black thread is finished stitching, so let's go ahead and switch it to the brown thread. All right, so to change my color thread, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna snip the excess black thread right here. I'm also gonna just go ahead and move this black thread off of the spool and get another color there. Eventually, I will have to do black again for the border, so I'm gonna just leave the black off to the side, but I will need to load up my fuchsia pink, which is this one right here. So let me get this loaded up and then I'm going to tie off the black thread. Sorry if my arm gets in the camera and blocks the view, but we do what we got to do around here. I am able to do this quicker, but trying to film it and do it is a little bit more tricky. All right. So I'm going to take the remaining of the black thread and I'm going to take bring my brown. I'm going to bring it back through here. And now what I'm going to do is just simply tie it into a knot maybe even two knots so that way it doesn't come undone when I go to pull it through the machine. This machine says in the manual that uh, when you're changing your color threads, you should uh, tie it off and pull the remaining through. So that way you don't damage any of the components in the machine. All right, so I already got one knot done. Let me go ahead and do one more knot and then I'm gonna pull it through the machine. Honestly, this be the hardest part sometimes is trying to tie these threads into a knot. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring my black thread from the needle. And now from here, I'm just gonna pull that thread through. I like to get my like finger like right here. Oh, you guys probably can't see it too well. Let me get you guys a different angle. So I like to put, um, use one finger to like pull the thread, keep it at this angle. And then with my other hand, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull the thread until uh, my brown thread comes through. As you can see, the brown thread just came through. So I got the brown thread. I'm gonna go ahead and snip it right here. And to feed it through the eye of the needle, all we gotta do is come up here. We gotta hit this thread button right here. Once we hit that button, the mechanism will come down to thread that needle. So I'm gonna hit the button. As you can see, the mechanism just came down. Let me change your angle up a little bit more. All right, so now with the brown thread, oh, where'd my brown thread go? Where'd my brown thread go? There it is. So now with the brown thread, I need to take it and hook it underneath this little tab here, like so. I'm gonna snip the excess right up here. I'm gonna snip the excess right there. And now I'm gonna hit the thread button again and it's gonna thread through the needle. Bam, just like that. So now from here, just like in the beginning, I have to hit the lock button. It's gonna turn green. I'm gonna hit that green button and then we're gonna get it going. Yeah, check it out, check it out. Patch is coming along nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and get the camera set up. 
in a stationary position so that way you guys can just enjoy this patch stitch out yeah that is a, that's a nice angle right there Look at this machine go, y'all. Look at it go. But no, I really like this machine. I really like this machine, this brother PRS 100. Some of you guys might be asking why did I get the, uh, the PRS 100 instead of a six needle machine or a 10 needle. Well, I think I already told you guys that. But it's really just, um, I don't mind doing the color changes with a single needle. Like, eventually it might get to a point where I do need to get a, invest into a larger machine that has more needles, uh, that has a larger uh, embroidery area. Uh, because I do have some people every once in a while who would like to get uh, larger patches made. And right now, the largest I can do on this machine is like almost eight inches, eight by eight inches for the most part. Well, that's as large as the hoop is. So. I, Really, realistically, it can only do about 7.75 inches by 7.75 inches, which is still a relatively large workspace area for embroidery. But like I said, at the moment, I, I really don't need that large of a machine. Uh, I can even do, um, I don't have the hat hoop at the moment, but I do plan on getting the hat hoop so that way I can provide custom hat services for people, in, uh, whether locally or across the U.S. But some of you also might be wondering too, why I chose uh, this version of the PRS 100 instead of the new model that they're coming out with. Even though they're coming out with like the new version of this machine, uh, I do like that blue colorway with the white and uh, the blue. I feel like the gray is just kind of uh, dull and boring. And not only that, but with this white and blue color scheme, it does match my Juki machine that I just re uh, got recently. Let me show you guys my Juki. So it does match the white and blue color scheme of my Juki machine right here, which I like a lot. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to coordinate. You got to coordinate. And I was actually quite lucky when I got this machine too. Um, because they, uh, this was the only PRS 100 that they had in this color scheme. This was the last one they had and this was the last one they were ever gonna have. And this is at the uh, Rocky Mountain Sewing and Vacuum. So if you're, so it was doing the brown and when it came time to jump from like uh, that, this area of the face to the other hand, it cut the thread first and then jumped over and that's one of the nice features of having one of these like bigger machines or one of these more advanced machines is because it will do those jump, uh, those jump cuts as opposed to the SE 625s. These machines do not do jump cuts whatsoever. So that, so there's always going to be a lot of bridge threads that I got to sit down and cut. But with this machine, I don't have to worry about doing any of that at all. Like as soon as it comes off the hoop, all I got to do is apply the fray check. Uh, let the fray check dry and cut it out as opposed to the 625s where I have to uh, take it off the hoop, cut all those little jump threads, uh, then add the fray check and cut it out. So it, it does save me a little bit of time. But yeah, guys, like I was saying, this, is a, this has been a great machine so far. Uh, no issues whatsoever. It was a used machine when I got it. So when I initially started doing embroidery, like the tensions, the tension settings were already pretty dang good. Oh man, I swear, this is this is the hardest part. Yeah, guys, just trying to tie off these threads and pull the thread through. That's That's been the toughest challenge so far with this machine. Just this alone would make me want to get a multi-needle machine so that way I don't have to do these color changes. But you gotta work with what you got, right? There we go, got the knots in there. Now let's go ahead and pull that thread through and thread it up. All right, just pull that through the needle. Pull this out. Come on with it. Bam, there it is. Works every time. And also too, like look at that, like having to pull the thread back through the machine. I feel like that's kind of a waste of like this extra thread that 
It could have been used, but oh well. I'd rather waste that little bit of thread than cause damage to this machine. Let's go ahead and hit that lock button and let's go ahead and start that thing. I wanna show you guys something real quick. Some of you guys might have seen these already, but these are magnetic patches. Check it out. So I have a magnetic backing. Let me change my focus area. So there is a magnetic backing on the back. And it's, as you can see, it's just uh, stitched onto there. That's what I use the Juki for, to stitch on uh, both my Velcro and magnetic backings. Uh, and it just sticks right onto the fridge. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Then I got that Ricky Shooter. Add that onto the fridge. I do plan on uh, swapping out majority of the stuff that's on my fridge already with my magnetic patches because these just look so much cooler. Mm. But I will keep my Malwolf mag magnet for sure. Guys, making these magnetic patches is actually super easy. So first things first, if you do want to make some magnetic patches, you will have to get yourself some magnetic sheets. So I have two different magnetic sheets because I wanted to do a compare and contrast. So these are the Craftopia uh, magnetic sheets. These are four by six. They come in a pack of 10. Um, the next one, we have our uh, magnetic sheets. These are four by six as well. And these are from Magic Fly. I do like both of them, but I, I do lean more towards that uh, Magic Fly because they feel a little bit thinner than the uh, Craftopia ones do. And um, they both have adhesive backings on them, but I do like just how thinner the Magic Fly feels and how more pliable they feel as well. Now let's get that out the way and let's get back to this machine. I have to now change it to the white thread. Yeah, but as far as like machines that I've had with the, from Brother, I've had the Brother SE625s. I did have um, another version of the, it wasn't the 625, but it was like, it was pretty much the same platform, but it didn't have a, a color screen. So that was like the only difference between the two. And with that machine, it was a little bit more difficult for uh, doing my color changes because like, if I didn't know what the color change was, like then like the design could have easily been ruined because it didn't display well what the color is that I need to change to. I highly recommend if you guys are getting into machine embroidery and you're looking at getting a, a brother machine for the most part, or a baby lock or any other machine, make sure you get a machine that has a color display. So that way you know what color you need to change to. Cause if you went with a machine that was only black and white, then that could make things difficult for you. So definitely get a machine that has a color display. So I got the white thread loaded up. I'm gonna go ahead and get it started. I'm gonna change, it, change the angle up so you guys can see what is going on. Yeah, yeah. As you can see right there, it's doing the white. After that, it's going to be fuchsia pink. Yep. This is going to finish up pretty quick because that's really the only thing it needs to do. All right, let's finish up with the black. Check it out, check it out. Kalisha made this tote right here. It's a special tote for her mom. Got a pack, a pocket on the back. And what I did was uh, we embroidered her name directly onto the tote, uh, if you guys can see that. So we embroidered her name directly onto the tote. And her mom uh, used to be a veterinarian. She's a nurse now, uh, but she loves dogs. So what we did, was we put a little dog print on there as well. And that is 100% embroidered right there. But the bag itself turned out super dope. We are gonna start providing like these custom tote options. So um, the totes are handmade. Cause we all know that uh, Walmart no longer provides bags. 
And we all know that it now costs 10 cents per bag at the grocery store. So uh, if you wanna pick yourself up a custom tote from Patch Boy Darb, be sure to uh, click the link in the description box to head over to our Etsy shop and see what handmade totes we have available. We do offer some personalization options to them. Uh, so if you wanted to get your name, or if you wanted to get your name heat pressed onto the tote, uh, there is that option as well. But this is embroidered. Yeah, check that out. Yeah. All right, all right, so fresh off the hoop, let's take a look at the Kids Next Door number five patch. Check it out. Bam, there it is. Looking nice and pretty. Oh man, the quality from this machine is like superb, you guys. You have no idea. Maybe it's like just the needle that I'm using. I do need it. I don't know what needle this is, uh, but I'm gonna try to look it up, figure it out, so that I can put that same needle into the SE625, so those machines can get the same quality as this design here. But now that this is finished, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go to the home menu. Now all that's left to do is to get this out the hoop. I'm afraid check it. I'm gonna cut it out and I'm gonna put it into one of my custom brand uh, packages. This has been Chris with Patch Boy Dark Patches for the culture. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button, and if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. And if you would like to see how I go about making a magnetic patch, be sure to leave a comment down below. We will see you on the next video. Peace.